There is no place like Idaho in the springtime. The weather's getting warmer, so that means the trees are blooming and the water is starting to look awfully nice. Even though we can't exactly go for a swim yet, that doesn't mean we can't still enjoy some of the Gem State's beautiful bodies of water. And there's definitely a lot of them to enjoy. Idaho has more than 2,000 lakes and nearly 9,000 named rivers and streams. The longest river, coming in at 779 miles, is the Snake River, and it's what we're tackling today. Located in beautiful Twin Falls, there's a lot to see here, from the base jumpers on Prime Bridge to the rushing waters of Shoshone Falls. And today, we're going to meet in the middle of the two and kayak to Pillar Falls. It's about two miles upstream from our launch point, and when you get there, you'll see a stunning series of cascades immersed in giant pillars, hence the name Pillar Falls. The area has so much to explore, but before we can get to that, we need to hop in the car and make the two-hour drive from downtown Boise to Centennial Park, the perfect starting point for today's adventure. <laughs> we brought our own kayaks today, but there is a local rental shop you can go to if you don't have one. Since we got to skip that step, we headed straight to the dock and into the water. Bye. Bye. <laughs> a few dozen others had the same idea as we did for the day, and it didn't take me long to realize why. After only a few seconds on the water, I found myself absolutely mesmerized by the view. Our first milestone was making it to Prime Bridge. Coming in at 486 feet, it's the eighth highest bridge in the United States. And it's actually the only bridge in the United States where base jumping is allowed year-round without a permit, making it an extremely popular site known around the world. Because there are no other bridges where you can legally get an adrenaline rush like this from, there are constantly lines of base jumpers. It seems like there was a different person flying through the sky every few minutes. So we floated under the bridge a while and watched them all take off. Even though we could have floated there for hours, the wind was starting to pick up and we needed to get a move on. So I grabbed my jacket and paddled. It's so windy. <laughs> We're not going anywhere. Core strength, back strength, arm strength, weak. <laughs> Against my body's wishes, I continued paddling for what I thought was a much farther distance than it actually was. My app says we've gone four kilometers, but I don't really know how far a kilometer is. I think my app is British, so can you translate that for me? About two and a half miles. We've gone two miles in two hours. Oh, that's not good. What I lacked for in speed, I made up for in views. And there were several houses on the canyon rim that got a front row seat to it all. Those houses are seriously so pretty. I want one. I don't know how to get one. Tell your friends about the show. <laughs> Once I was done lusting over the houses above me, we started to approach Pillar Falls. Land ho! We made it! But before I pulled in, what the heck? I noticed something in the water. Are these clams? Unfortunately, about a dozen species of non-native mollusks have made their way into Idaho's waters. They typically latch onto or lay eggs on boats that are coming in from neighboring waters. So it's really important to thoroughly wash and dry all of your equipment. If you're renting a kayak, you don't have to worry about this. But if you bring your own like we did, make sure you buy an Idaho Invasive Species Fund sticker from Idaho Parks and Rec. And then you can enjoy Pillar Falls knowing you're helping to keep it beautiful and safe. This is pretty. <laughs> That's very convenient. <laughs> Once I made it out of my kayak, we started exploring and it was pretty incredible.
Okay, today has been so much fun, but I do have to bring it down a notch to a more serious note. When you see this body of water, under no circumstances should you try to kayak it or swim in it. Multiple people have drowned here and it's just not safe at all. So if you want to continue your kayak journey all the way to Shoshone Falls, all you have to do is carry your kayak up here and then you'll take it to that body of water, which is very safe and that'll take you the rest of the way. I'm too tired, so if you want to do it, you totally should. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> if you do decide to extend your trip, this is the way you'll be going. After some more canyon views, you'll end up at one of the largest natural waterfalls in the country. At 212 feet tall and 900 feet wide, Shoshone Falls surpasses the height of Niagara Falls. It'll take you about another 40 minutes to get there via kayak, although I'm probably not the best person to reference for that one. We just ran into some kayakers who said they got here in 45 minutes. It took us like two and a half hours. That was your fault. I'm mortified. <laughs> no, like I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> what? Once the sun started to set and taking how slow of a kayaker I am into consideration, we knew we had to make our way back to Centennial Park. We got to watch the sunset as we paddled, adding the perfect ending to yet another perfect day in Idaho. It's something that you don't see every day, so I wanted to bring that to Boise. Coming up, we head downtown for a glass blowing class to make our very own tumbler. Blow, 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 blow. 